Hi guys, today I'm going to be doing my October wrap up which is slightly late because I've been ill for about the past month which has not been nice and has meant that I haven't been able to film any videos for my channel which has really been irritating. First I think the best thing to note is that it is currently bonfire night and probably the worst night to film videos so there may be explosions at some point. Great. So in October I participated in the Victober read along and I did a video on that so you can see my TBR. The books I read did deviate a lot from my intended TBR as usually happens. I don't usually stick to TBRs so I don't really know why I make them in the first place to be honest but I still read lots of amazing books. So the first book I read for October was Under the Greenwood Tree by Thomas Hardy. I can't actually decide why I picked this one up in the first place but I read this right at the start of the month and I thought it was good to welcome in the autumn. Under the Greenwood Tree was one of Thomas Hardy's first novels which is why I wanted to read it because I read Tess of the Durbervilles earlier in the summer. I really enjoyed that. It's a book that I really love so I thought I'd try some more Thomas Hardy. I went into this with very few expectations, not many people talk about it, it's not one of his better known ones and so I kind of accepted the fact that it might not be as interesting. Nothing really happens in this book. That's the first thing I can say about it. Hardly anything happens but because of that I actually really really enjoyed it. It's set in Hardy's fictional county of Wessex and I think in this you really get to see the Wessex life, these country people who are pretty simple and it follows a group of people who are in a country band, they play in church every week and it really follows a character called Dick and his courting of the new school teacher who is called Fancy and those names, not a lot I can say about them to be honest, I think it's pretty self-explanatory from the sound of them but I thought this was really quaint, it was really sweet and even though nothing happened it was a really basic plot. I thoroughly enjoyed it and I think I gave it about four and a half stars. I don't think many people would, I don't think many people would enjoy it as much as I did. I wouldn't say it's Thomas Hardy's best novel but as a portrait of country life in the 1800s I thought this was really really good and one that I was happy that I read in October. And then the second book I read for October was the one I wanted to read the most and it was The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. You could tell from my edition that I took it everywhere with me, it's really ruined. <laughs> I read it so much, it was shoved in my bag and I took it out at every possible opportunity. This one did take me a, quite a long time to read because I was really invested in it and I think I was so invested that I wanted to savour it so I didn't read it all in one go, I was picking and choosing, I was reading it pretty much every day but I wasn't reading a lot of it because the chapters are quite long. The Tenant of Welfare Hall was Anne Bronte's second novel, her first being Agnes Grey which I read last year. I really enjoyed Agnes Grey, it was really simple and I actually much preferred it to Jane Eyre which it's quite surprising because Agnes Great is unknown compared to Jane Eyre, which is huge. It is universally known across the globe. Jane Eyre is just the Bronte book you probably think of first, either that or Wuthering Heights. And Bronte is really underrated, just like her books. But The Tenant of Welfare Hall, I think, is amongst the best out of all of them. I love Wuthering Heights, that's been my favourite Bronte book, but I think this is equal in my love to it. It's a very different type of love. The Tenant of Welfare Hall is a very different book. In the way that Jane Eyre and Wuthering Heights are definitely books of the romantic period and I think both of those books draw on the Brontes earlier readings of Byron's works in characters like Heathcliff and Mr Rochester whereas The Tenant of Welfare Hall is more a realistic portrayal of life in the Victorian era. It's about a woman called Helen. She moves in to Wildfell Hall and the book is told from the perspective of Gilbert Markham at first who lives in the same town or village as Wildfell Hall where Helen has moved to and she's really mysterious, everyone is gossiping about her and Gilbert starts to get to know her and Helen has this story and this story, it's not really a spoiler to say this because I think it's very well known, it's the whole premise of the book. Helen's story is that she has escaped her husband who's very abusive, he is an alcoholic and she's taken her child and run away and The Tenant of Welfare Hall is her recount of that, it's told through her diary entries, it's so fascinating. I love this and I think if you would like to I will be doing a full video going into greater depth of things like the themes. I'll be doing more of an academic type video rather than a simple review. So I'm very happy to do that. I've already planned it out because I love the Brontes and I'd like to do a whole Bronte series really so if that's something you'd be interested in let me know in the comments because I'd like to know if that's something that you would like to watch. A major five stars for the Tenant of Welfare Hall for me. I adored it. And then the other book I read for Victoria was Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. This was one that I featured 
it in my TBR albums hoping to read. I wanted to read it in a day because it's pretty short, but I didn't do that because it bored me a little bit. I gave this one three stars, but I did go into it knowing that it's not Elizabeth Gaskell's best novel. I definitely went into it knowing that, not expecting a lot from it, and I didn't really get a lot out from it, which was a shame. I wanted to really, really love it, but nothing happens in this book. Absolutely nothing. There is no plot whatsoever other than a basic premise. Just wanted to finish it because I liked the characters, but the characters were really all that there was. It's basically the character's life in this town called Cranford and that's it. You just see their everyday lives. I'd recommend reading it because it was quite interesting, but it's not amazing, which I expected and I'm going to read North and South at some point because that's the one I'm most excited to read of Elizabeth Gaskell's novels. And then the only other book that I read this month was one that I tucked myself up in bed on a weekend morning and marathoned my way through because I was so excited to read it. And it is The 100 Nights of Hero by Isabel Greenberg. I read the Encyclopedia of Early Earth early this year and I loved it. She's one of my favourite graphic novelists and I much prefer this to Encyclopedia of Early Earth. I thought this was amazing. I gave it five stars and I can see it appearing on my end of year favourite list because I love the story of it so much and I think the thing I liked about this one is that the whole premise of it is that there are these two men they're basically talking about women and how bad they are and one man says to the other well my wife is really faithful to me I bet you I will give you 100 nights to try and seduce her because she hasn't slept with me yet and she's very faithful so this man moves in with this other man's wife and what's really going on is this man's wife who is called Cherry is having an affair behind his back with a woman called hero and so they try and outsmart this man who is trying to seduce Cherry by telling him stories and this is a collection of those stories with Cherry and Hero's narrative thrown in and it is amazing it appealed to my feminist heart it was a really great LGBT romance and I want to read it again just thinking about it because it was so so good and the stories interspersed within it are also equally amazing and feel so real I feel like they're a part of my own folklore it's such a beautiful book too I think this would make a really good beautiful present I'm gonna be rereading this a lot I love Isabel Greenberg and this just proved how much I love her stuff it made me love her even more so those are the books that I read in October in the comments let me know what you read in October what was your favorite book was there a book that disappointed you why did it disappoint you let me know in the comments and we can share the bookish love I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I will see you guys soon happy reading